So we've looked at addition and subtraction. We're going to start looking at multiplying polynomials. What's going to happen in these cases? So the first case, we're going to look at multiplying 3x times 4x. We've already seen the product and what it's equivalent to, but we're going to take each step and talk about what law allows me to perform these operations in this way. So kind of a nice review over those laws that you're probably like, I don't need to know them, I'll just forget. So, first, what law allows me to keep the same order but remove parentheses, grouping things together? That tells me the associative law allows me to do that. I can associate things together, remove that association. And then to switch the order around, so grouping three and four, putting them next to each other and putting the x's together. What allows us to change the order of things or commute them? The commutative law. And we're allowed to put parentheses back in there using the associative law. And then we can just evaluate and in this case use those product rules, product rules for exponents. So we can combine x times x and write it as x squared. So in the end what's happening? We can take our constants and multiply them together since multiplication is commutative and associative. And we can take our variables and multiply them together as well. So to find the product of two monomials, we multiply the coefficients, or just the constants on the front, and then multiply the variables using those product rules for exponents to write them nicely instead of having, you know, 10 factors of x times x times x, we can concisely write it x to the 10th, just an example. So we're going to take a few and look at each of these. So again, we can multiply the coefficients or the constants together and the variables together. So what am I looking at? 5 times 6 will give me 30. How many factors of x do I have? 2. Concisely, we can write that as 30x squared. For part b, multiplying the coefficients, I've got negative 3. And I've got x times x, two factors of those, negative 3x squared. And the last one's a little bit more complicated, so I'll write it out. I've got negative 7 times 4, taking the coefficients, and y5 times y3. So multiplying the constants, we can get, what, negative 28. And my base here is y, and I have multiplication. So when I have the same base and I'm multiplying, what do I do with those exponents? I add them together. Same base, multiplication, 5 plus 3. So I've got 8 factors of y. So I've got 20, negative 28y to the 8th. A lot more concise in writing out the product of those monomials. So go ahead and take the next three. Tell me those products. What are we looking at? First one, if we're multiplying the coefficients on the front, I've got a negative, and I've got the same base and a multiplication involved. So we add those exponents together, I've got five factors of x all being multiplied, then times a negative on the outside. And the same story down here. Multiplying the coefficients, I've got negative 8. Same base with multiplication, so we add these exponents together. I've got 11 factors of y. And in this last one, they are both monomials, but zero times anything is always zero. Just to double check. Check in on that guy. It's been a little bit. So let's look at some bigger cases now. To multiply a monomial, such as 2x, I'll choose that monomial, and a binomial, two terms, 5x plus 3. If I'm going to multiply those two, what do we have to use? We have to use a distributive law. So let's see. If I have 2x times this entire quantity, this entire binomial, 5x plus 3, what does it look like? So we have to take this term, multiply it times the first one. So I get 2 times 5 will give me 10x squared. 2x times 3, 
will give me 6x. So we have to use the distributive law over anything larger than a monomial. So we'll do a few examples of those, multiplying a monomial by a polynomial larger than a monomial. So in this case, I've got a monomial times a what? One, two, three terms times a trinomial. So we have to distribute 5x to each of these to be able to get rid of the parentheses. So 5 times the first one, I've got 5x times 2x squared. 5x times the second one. Need to write out all the terms? Go for it. Plus 5x. Plus 5x times 4. If you can do this in your head as you're going along, simplify as you go. Go for it. So what do I have for my first term? 5 times 2 will give me 10. How many factors of x am I looking at? Got 2 here and 1 there. Same base with multiplication. We add the exponents together. 5 times negative 3. Negative 15. How many x's? Two of them. And last, 5 times 4, 20x. So if you can jump from here to here without the in-between step, I'm totally fine with that. We'll probably start doing it after a while anyway. So down here, distributing into the first, I'm looking at negative 2x to what power? So same base with multiplication, I add these together. Got six factors of x. Negative 2 times negative 7. Positive 14. How many factors of x? 3, 4, 5. Negative 2 times 10. Negative 20. How many factors of x? 3, 4. And last, negative 2 times negative 4. Positive 8. How many factors of x? 3. Okay. And it's a good tell if you have a monomial on the outside and everything here is in descending order already, when you multiply it in, it's still going to be in descending order. So if you have a mix, mixed up, you've made a mistake somewhere with your distribution. So that's a good check as you're working through these. So go ahead and take these next three. Multiply the monomial into the polynomials that are present. In the first one, first term, 4 times 2 will give me 8. How many factors of x? Two of them. 4 times 4, 16. And how many factors of x? One of them. For part b, again, distributing the monomial to every single term in my binomial here. So 3 times negative 5. Negative 15. How many factors of t am I looking at? Three of them. Three times two. Six. How many factors of t? Only two. And for the last, negative five times one will give us negative five. How many factors of x? Same base, being multiplied, we add our exponents. I've got six of them. And it's in descending order, so it should be smaller than six for these powers that are left. So let's see, negative 5 times negative 5, negative 25, x to the 3, 4, 5, good. So the next power has to be smaller than 5. So negative 5 times negative 6, going to be a positive 30, x to the 4th, good. Next power is going to have to be smaller than 4. Negative 5 times 8. What are we looking at in that case? Negative 40 factors of x. I've got three of them all together. Still in descending order, which is a good check to have.